Hello and welcome back to the HIV RNA Test Guide podcast. You know, your trusted source for all things HIV. Absolutely. Now you might be thinking, wait, pancreatic cancer. Yeah. What's that got to do with HIV? Right. And you're right to wonder. Yeah. But stick with us because this deep dive takes us into some cutting edge science that's actually super relevant to the fight against HIV. Totally. We're talking about mRNA vaccines. Yes. And their potential to treat one of the deadliest cancers out there. Yeah, pancreatic cancer has always been this incredibly tough nut to crack. Oh, absolutely. The survival rates, Cut. honestly, they're brutal. Yeah, it's like you're up against a ticking time bomb. It is. Fewer than 13 out of 100 people diagnosed make it past five years. It's rough. So why is this cancer so hard to treat? Well, a few reasons. Okay. It's often caught late. Uh-huh. It spreads fast. Right. And we just haven't had a lot of effective treatments. Yeah. But here's where it gets interesting. Scientists are now looking at mRNA vaccines. Yes, the same tech behind the COVID vaccines. Oh, wow. To see if they can turn the tide. Wait, so you're saying they're trying to use mRNA to fight cancer? Yep. How does that even work? Okay, so you know how mRNA basically carries instructions to our cells, right? Yes. Well, in vaccines, it carries the instructions to build a tiny piece of the virus, right? which then trains the immune system to recognize and attack the real deal. Okay. With cancer, it's a similar idea. Got it. The mRNA carries instructions to build a piece of the cancer cell. Okay. So the immune system learns to target those cells specifically. Okay. I'm starting to see the connection to HIV. Yes. This whole idea of training the immune system is super relevant, right? It is. Because with HIV, we've been trying to get the body to target the virus for decades. Exactly. Uh -huh. And that's what makes this research so exciting. For sure. But there was a big question mark hanging over mRNA vaccines and pancreatic cancer. See, for this to work, the vaccine needs to target something unique on the cancer cells, huh? like a wanted poster for the immune system. Okay. But pancreatic tumors... Yeah they often don't have a lot of these unique targets. So scientists were basically thinking this mRNA thing might not work for this type of cancer. Yeah, there was a lot of skepticism, but then boom, the mm. study comes out in nature and it kind of flips the script. Really? It was a small phase one trial, just 16 patients, all of whom had operable pancreatic cancer. Right, because with most pancreatic cancers, by the time they're found, Surgery isn't even an option. That's right. Yeah. So these patients all had their tumors removed, which is the standard of care. Okay. But then on top of that, they got something extra. Mm. Personalized mRNA vaccines designed based on the genetic makeup of their specific tumors. Wow. Like custom-made cancer-fighting instructions. Hold on. So they're basically creating a custom vaccine for each person's tumor. Yeah. That's some serious sci-fi stuff right there. It is pretty amazing. And they got this on top of chemo and immunotherapy. Yep, a multi-pronged attack. Wow. And get this, half of the participants developed a long-lasting immune response against their cancer cells. Really? Their bodies were learning to fight off the cancer, potentially preventing it from coming back. It's amazing. Yeah, it was a pretty remarkable finding, especially because, as you know, pancreatic cancer is notorious for coming back even after treatment. Right, okay, that's promising. Yeah. But 16 people is a tiny group. Yeah. What would you say to someone listening who's thinking, hold on, is this hype or is this real? Yeah, that's a fair question. Look, I don't want to give false hope. You know, this is early research. Right. But if you're listening to this, you know, science moves in steps. Mm. And this feels like a big step. So big step, but still early days. Mm. What does this actually mean for people battling pancreatic cancer right now? It means there's a reason to be cautiously optimistic. You know, it's not a cure. Right. And we need larger trials to confirm these findings. But it opens up a whole new avenue for research and potential treatment options. And it's not just about extending lifespan, right? right? It's about quality of life, too. Absolutely. If we can find ways to effectively treat pancreatic cancer, yeah. it means people can spend more precious time with their loved ones doing the things they enjoy. Exactly. And that's where the personalized nature of these mRNA vaccines is so intriguing. Oh, yeah. Because they're tailored to each individual's tumor. Right. They offer the potential for more targeted and effective treatment, uh -huh. potentially with fewer side effects compared to traditional chemotherapy. That's huge because chemo can be incredibly tough on people. It can be brutal. So to have a potential alternative that's more precise and maybe even less harsh, that would be a game changer. 
It really could be. And this is where I think it's important to remember that we're still in the early stages of research. Of course, yeah. There's a lot more work to be done before these vaccines become widely available. Definitely a reason for cautious optimism. Mm. So where do things go from here? What are the next steps in this research? The obvious next step is larger clinical trials with more diverse groups of patients. Okay. We need to see if these positive results hold up in a bigger and more varied population. Yeah. Researchers will need to investigate things like the best dosage, long-term efficacy, and of course, safety is paramount. Right, because even though these early results are promising, yes. we need to make sure these vaccines are safe for widespread use. For sure. And I imagine researchers will also be exploring whether this approach could work for other types of cancer as well. Absolutely. The beauty of mRNA technology is its versatility. Yeah. It's like a platform that can be adapted and modified for different purposes. I see. So if it proves successful for pancreatic cancer, there's no reason why it couldn't be explored for other cancers that have been difficult to treat. And that brings us back to HIV. Yeah. Could this same technology be the key to finally developing an effective HIV vaccine? It's definitely a possibility, you see, just like with cancer. The idea is to use mRNA to teach the immune system to recognize and attack HIV. I get it. The challenge with HIV, though, is that the virus is a master of disguise. Oh, right. It's constantly mutating and evolving, uh -huh. making it hard for the immune system to keep up. So it's like trying to hit a moving target, right? It is. But with mRNA, we might be able to create vaccines that are adaptable and can keep up with those changes. Exactly. That's the hope. And there are already some very promising HIV vaccine candidates in development that utilize mRNA technology. That's really encouraging to hear because a vaccine would be a total game changer for HIV prevention. It would. I mean, think about it. We could potentially eradicate the virus altogether. That's the ultimate goal, right? And even if a vaccine is still years away, the research happening now could lead to other breakthroughs in HIV treatment and prevention. Like what? Give us some examples. Well, for instance, the knowledge gained from studying mRNA vaccines could lead to new ways to boost the immune system, no. control viral replication, yeah. or even achieve a functional cure for HIV. Wow. It's a rapidly evolving field and there's a lot to be excited about. It's amazing to think how far HIV research has come and how much progress is still being made. It really is. It's a reminder that science is constantly evolving. Yes. Always searching for new solutions and pushing the boundaries of what's possible. Couldn't agree more. Mm -hmm. And with dedicated researchers and continued support, I think we can be hopeful that we're moving towards a world without HIV. Well said. So we've gone deep on the science and the potential of mRNA vaccines for both cancer and HIV. We have. But what does this all mean for our listeners who are living with HIV or concerned about HIV? Mm. How can they use this information to take care of their health? Well, first and foremost, I think it underscores the importance of staying informed about the latest advancements in HIV research. You know, knowledge is power, right? Right. The more you understand about how the virus works and the potential of new treatments and prevention strategies, the better equipped you are to make informed decisions about your health. Mm. Absolutely. We always say that here on the HIV RNA Test Guide podcast, knowledge is key to taking control of your health. So staying informed, that's a big one. What else? I think this research also reinforces the importance of regular HIV testing. Early detection is crucial, especially with the potential for new treatments like these mRNA vaccines. Mm -hmm. The earlier we can catch the virus, the better the chances of achieving a good outcome. That's a really important point. We have a ton of resources on HIV testing on our website. Great. So if you're listening and you haven't been tested recently or you have any questions about testing, please head over to HIVRNAGuide.com. We're here to help you navigate all of that. Okay, so staying informed, getting tested, anything else our listeners should keep in mind. You know, I think it's also a good reminder that while science is making incredible strides, there's still no magic bullet. HIV prevention is still crucial. Using mm. condoms, knowing your status, and considering pre-exposure prophylaxis or pre-MIMI are all essential tools to protect yourself and your partners. Right, it's about using all the tools in the toolbox, right? right? We can't just sit back and wait for a vaccine. We have to be proactive about our health right now. Exactly. And even if a vaccine is still years away, the research happening now could lead to other breakthroughs in HIV treatment and prevention, giving us even more options to fight the virus. It's a really exciting time to be following HIV research, that's mm. for sure. So much is happening, and it feels like we're on the cusp of some major breakthroughs. I agree, and I think it's important for people living with HIV and those who are concerned about HIV to know that they're not alone in this journey. 
There's a whole community of researchers, healthcare providers, and advocates who are working tirelessly to find solutions and improve the lives of people affected by HIV. That's a powerful message. We're all in this together and we'll continue to fight for a future without HIV. Well, on that note of hope and progress, mm. I think we're gonna wrap up this deep dive. I wanna thank you for joining us, for being part of this conversation. It's been a fascinating journey into the world of mRNA vaccines and their potential impact on both cancer and HIV. It's been a pleasure to be here, and I want to echo what you said about hope while there are still challenges ahead. The progress we're seeing in medical research is truly remarkable. It really is. And to our listeners, we encourage you to stay curious, stay informed, and stay engaged in the fight against HIV. We'll be back next week with another deep dive into a topic that's relevant to your health and well-being. Until then, take care of yourselves and keep those questions coming. This is the HIV RNA Test Guide podcast signing off.